everyone. Welcome to my school creation presentation. My name is Leslie Collings and I am the director of 21st Century Learning for Rocky View Schools. I started off my career as a high school teacher, uh, moved into administration relatively early, um, have, had, has, have had experience at all levels from K to 12 uh, in both teaching and uh, leadership capacities. I did end up at a high school where we engaged in a large-scale transformation that moved into a project-based learning environment along with uh, a community that supported um, the move to a bring-your-own device. With that move, we began to understand that flexibility in school and in learning needed to occur because learning in the 21st century doesn't necessarily follow the guidelines of it being in a um, school environment. Um, I want to also say that uh, before I start is that our jurisdiction is uh, very innovative and supports this kind of, uh, of transformation. And also want to note that the province of Alberta, in which I also uh, live and work, um, is also connected to this direction. And at the end of this presentation, I've linked some websites that you can go to take a look. Now let's get to work. I'm going to share with you my screen. And get the slides back to where they're supposed to be. Give you a chance to take a look at this. For my project, I chose to look at creating a center for leadership and learning that is attached to a campus um, where it houses a high school and, in my scenario, a middle school. These schools would serve as a demonstration site as to how um, you could look at uh, teaching and learning in a 21st century environment. And High Tech High is definitely an inspiration for this scenario. The high school uh, in this scenario is actually 85% built and it is built on the scenario of a smaller school within a larger school, pods, um, maker spaces, lots of hands-on experiential spots. Um, it is totally wireless, so it will be a ubiquitous computing environment. And it sets, sets the stage, hopefully, in the building for students to be creative. Now all we need to do is just make sure that the pedagogical practices follow. Speaking of creative, it is my plan uh, the middle school has not been conceptualized or even built, but in my mind, I would um, ask the high school to think about creating a project that would give those students an opportunity to create uh, the middle school as part of an inquiry uh, process um, to be exhibited to um, all kinds of people outside the jurisdiction, including um, those people who do build schools, uh, Alberta Education, engineers, architects, um, and so I'm going to go to the next slide because I do believe that sometimes you have to try these things out. So what I did is I talked to a high school student and talked to them about what I was thinking with respect to students in design, designing a, a middle school, high school campus with uh, the Center for Leadership and Learning, and I, I also talked about the, the spaces being um, shared and gave this student full creativity. She did not see the floor plans for the high school but she decided to start with a high school and decided that the middle school would be a mirror image with a few exceptions because of course this is a shared campus. She learned uh, an app called Floor Plan which is a Google site, um, played with it, spent countless hours on it and created what you see here. Um, her vision of this school is really interesting. Obviously, lots of creative processes here. Um, Note it has a lot of spaces for students to learn and a lot of flexible learning spaces. Her two comments to me were when I approached her on this is that she wanted to create a spaces where there was comfortable furniture, i.e. lots of couches and comfortable chairs, and lots of spaces inside and out. So if you go to the full floor plan, which is you can see linked here in red, 
you will see the amazing amount of work that went into this. Um, she's placed intricately all kinds of um, desks and chairs and um, lots of uh, comfortable spaces and she's placed all of that in there and so if you actually are able to pull this in a little bit you will actually see the couches and the chairs and such. Uh, what I find interesting in this experiment is that uh, she did not have um, this was not a something that um, she was given credits for um, she was not given anything but just an idea and she was so interested so number one is my feeling of student uh, voice is is so powerful and this whole experience firms up my belief that if it's interesting enough relevant enough creative enough students will engage um, the book uh, called uh, by Daniel Pink called um, Drive he talks about intrinsic motivation and, and this is really an example it's very powerful this is the rendition of the high school and the idea from the student again would be for the middle school to be a mirror image with a few exceptions this campus is shared they share resources and spaces ie green spaces flex spaces gym pool um, and by the way the schools would save money on that uh, creating opportunities to uh, lower class sizes and to create the uh, Center for Innovation and Learning. I've included a link on this site to the full narrative uh, and it's written in Google Doc and as stated before these two schools in the Center for Innovative Leadership and Learning work together to give students and teachers an opportunity to learn about learning together. The goal is always about students and their and learning and how we do best for our students to create opportunities for stakeholders to learn in a place and for others to see inquiry, universal learning environments, and all of those other principles in action. Pedagogical practices are so important and I want to take a, a second to talk about the fact that in this scenario we would need to really be creative and getting time and collaboration embedded into these, uh, into these uh, schools and into the center um, so that teachers can uh, work together because as we know it is a team sport and also to plan together and to be a part of this so pedagogy is simple the center will be the hub for 21st century thought and theory the schools will put theory into practice and this practice will be open to educators to see and experience the culture and practice and as I said before we need to embed creative ways of uh, teacher time in here. This scenario is in the public system and the jurisdiction is in uh, the, uh, it has boundaries and they're mandated boundaries. And, um, but Alberta Education opens up opportunities for parents to look at sending their kids, um, children to different schools as long as there's room and program available and transportation. Because this, in this scenario, this school is in a city um, there is, there could be opportunity for city buses um, to provide transportation so that no, no students would be left out. In terms of the facility, any staff, or sorry, the faculty, any staff that would be introduced to the culture of the jurisdiction uh, and learn what is expected them in their, and of their teaching. The center would provide professional learning opportunities for new staff to learn the philosophy and the theory and then they would be exposed to the school to immerse into the culture of inquiry, flexibility and such in action. The teachers at the two lighthouse schools would provide mentorship and experience for new staff beyond the superficial. New staff would be immersed and once they are ready they would go into their schools to continue the work with the philosophy in mind. What I also envision is that this school would be connected to university so that if it was in a teaching position there would be accreditation involved as well as for leadership people who are leading in these schools would get possibly um, accreditation for a master's level um, perhaps even some PhD work but it would all be interconnected that way. I go into quite a bit of detail into my in my narrative, but I feel that the hiring process at the jurisdiction is off to a good start. 
the, the component that I would add to it is a dynamic component, which is that potentials we hire need to demonstrate their understanding of the principles that the jurisdiction is looking for. Observation, demonstration, and student involvement are key pieces. I really like the idea of potential candidates producing a portfolio, and I would really feel that this could be a part of the uh, process. If hired, they would be directly placed into the Center for Leadership and Learning for additional professional learning, as well as being immersed into the Lighthouse Schools to see the examples of how this kind of teaching and learning looks, so that when they go into their placements, they can be leaders and uh, create those opportunities in their own schools. As in the previous slides, I really want to accentuate the importance of professional learning as a cornerstone to this process. The Center of uh, Innovative Leadership and Learning would provide um, with the bonus of having two examples uh, in the same location of practical. Um, listening to theory is important, seeing it and being immersed in it is the other piece, which was what we're trying to do on this campus. Throughout the process, we're going to use a, a learning walks approach, um, and it will be the primary uh, vehicle by which we learn about learning together. And I've linked the website for uh, learning walks on the at the end of this presentation if you want to take a look at it. It's a very generative way of getting at the learning and seeing uh, what, what does it look like and describing it and um, working together. No one is ever there, and in this scenario, we are trying to build a culture of inquiry, not only for students, but for those who work in our buildings. The idea is to have also students uh, involved in being able to describe what they are learning and why. By describing what they're learning and why, they deepen their understanding, and educators can learn how to leverage sound pedagogical practices so that students are immersed and interested and able to articulate their learning. And I would venture to extend that to say that the staff should also be able to, to articulate what is good teaching and learning practice and be able to demonstrate it as well. This is the um, Google Map uh, extrapolated from the, the Google Map site. And you can see there's plenty of space. The jurisdiction office is off to the uh, right across the road. And as you can see, the campus site is all together. And I want to also accentuate the fact that I believe that this is an intertwined campus. There's shared resources and there's share, a shared connection to the Innovative Teaching and Learning uh, Center. And students, should they not be in bounds, as mentioned before, can, can also come to this school using public transit. To close, I want to say that the power of student voice is important, as evidenced in the previous slides. We are born with a natural curiosity, and we need to maintain that curiosity and love of learning. Um, as evidenced in the experiment with the grade 11 student, um, if they are interested in creating a school spending countless amounts of hours for absolutely nothing tangible except for intrinsic satisfaction curiosity, I, I rest my case. And the second thing I want to accentuate, as you can see, it's about learning and it's about, our, it's about students. As a profession, we need to be guided uh, by principles based on natural curiosity, both for students and for staff. Education is a creative sport and a team sport. In this scenario, uh, we've created, or hope to create, a school that has a mission to be inquiry-based uh, and subscribe to giving back to the learning community through observations, mentorship, and a strong connection to a center for leadership and learning. Professional learning is the cornerstone to all of this. If we want to build 21st century learning schools, we have to build 21st century supports to get the job done. Thanks for this experience. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And on the last slide, I give you the uh, resources that were used uh, in this presentation. And this presentation slides will be available on uh, the Google community. Thanks again.